Hello everybody and welcome, my name is Ursa Ryan and today we're playing as Tokugawa as a lot of people have because, let me tell you now, domestic trade routes have been fixed and made brilliant. This is going to be one of the best games we've played in a long time because this Civ leader is very, very fun. Before we get started, as I've been asking a little bit recently, if you haven't subscribed to the channel and you want to give me a Christmas present that's free and that you can retract at any point, please do because it makes a huge, huge difference. It's been almost 3,000 subscribers subscribers in the last month. I cannot tell you how mad that is. Superlatives have failed me and honestly this is making the dream so real. Thank you so much for all your support. Let's just jump straight in. Remember Discord is the place that you can find this exact save file if you want to copy and paste it onto your computer as well as all of the user interface mods that I use. Links in the description. But for those who want to be in the know, this is a 10 player huge map. I very rarely play on huge maps. I either go standard or uh, no, no, sorry, it's not a huge map. It's a large map. This is the 10 player one. You see, this is where I get confused. The 10 player map, because I always go either 8 player or 12 players. 10 is sort of a big map, but not too big. You know, it's sort of like I want a lot, but not too much. Continents and Islands, I love that map. I know I do. I should play on other things, but it's just such a lovely map, especially after the Civ give. People really saw that map in a lot of love and, and sort of how it was really, really showing itself to be brilliant to everybody. I up city states to 20. I quite like there to be two city states per person on the map. It's just a thing I do. I don't know whether or not that's actually balanced or not. It just feels good for me. And we've also got a balanced start position. I was going to say legendary. No, it's balanced. Again, I quite like balanced at the moment. It just gives a nice balanced game. No game mode so that we can show off the Civ in its full glory, standard, speed and deity difficulty as per usual. And one of the brilliant exercises about the Leader's Pass is that I've been having to tear apart my understanding of every Civ and putting it between what is the Leader and what is the Civ. If you'd actually asked me before any of this had happened in like a pub quiz scenario, Hey Asa, when you play Original Japan, what is the Leader ability and what is the Japan ability? I would have actually scratched my head and really struggled to tell you which one was which, but it is. The Meiji Restoration is the Japan bit. Now, this is, I, I, I'm really glad about this because this is actually one of my favourite bits of the game. All districts receive an additional standard adjacency bonus. We still have that for being adjacent to another district. It's really, really good. Samurai, Electronics Factories, they all return. However, no longer do we have some divine flatulence coming out of our spiritual rear ends. No, no, coasts, they mean nothing to us. Hurricanes, again, our rear ends are not producing anything like that today. So no half-price holy sites, no half-price theatre squares, no half-price encampments, no plus five combat strength. No, 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 no. Bakahan is the ability of the day, and this is amazing. We're going to pick it apart into some bad bits, some irrelevant bits, and some really good bits. International trade routes receive minus 25% yield and tourism. Okay, basically, you're not going to be trading with anybody outside of your borders. Isolationism is the name of the game. Cities within six tiles of my capital are 100% loyal. Again, it's, it, it, it's, it's okay. I guess if you had a really cramped start, that might be a thing. Or maybe if you were at war and your capital got taken and then it flipped, that might be useful. But that's really not going to be something that comes up in a day-to-day -day game. I wouldn't worry about that. Remove that soggy leader detritement from the earlobes of your brain. It's not relevant. Rev I mean, yeah, actually, this bit isn't very good either. Researching flight receives plus one tourism for every district. Now, I believe that is every Every district in your empire. Again, it's okay. Plus one tourism is not really something to get out of bed for. Like, to put it in context, if you get a biosphere game and you put down a single solar farm, with environmentalism, with computers, that would give you 10 tourism per tile. So it's a nice amount, but you don't really need it. What is a thing is plus one culture, plus one science, and plus two gold for every specialty district at the destination on domestic trade routes. Let me tell you, this is where it gets nuts. Now you've seen a bunch of other Civ YouTubers play with Tokugawa before. You've seen how powerful it can be. I am gonna try and make this even more ridiculous. We are going to be making the ultimate Bakuhan ability. We are going to sprawl with lots and lots of trade routes and have them all firing to a single point in my empire, a city that I will call the Trade Nexus. That Trade Nexus will have the population, it will have the districts, it will have everything to make these domestic trade routes meaty. I will be building them up in every way that I know how. Communism, I hate to say it, but the University of Sankor, if I can get it. 
That one may be a little bit tricky because it does require desert and if I want to build a trading nexus, typically desert is not where you go to start a high food yield city like that, but we shall see. It's all about trade routes and we will be getting some crazy, crazy yields later into the game. Will I be getting culture? Will I be getting science? Will I be getting domination? It doesn't matter. Although actually culture is a little bit harder because you do lose 25% tourism from people, but it's fine. Just come to Discord, grab a safe file, play along. Turn one and we need to throw everything we know about Japan out of the window because we are no longer chasing holy sites, we are no longer chasing the coast. If anything, actually being on the coast can be a little bit of a problem. We want to have access to it because it does give us specialty districts like the harbour and you want to get as many in a city as you possibly can, but we don't need to be on the coast. This, actually with just a small fleeting aspect of the coast to the north of us, that is quite fine. This would not be a bad settlement spot. This is a Plains Hill tile that gives two food, two production to the capital if I plonk it down. We also have some sugar here. Aha, uh -huh. yes please. That is an irrigation improvement. It gives a lot of extra food. I could go and settle on it, although I would be settling on a floodplain and putting my capital on a floodplain always causes me to have a little bit of fear. Just a, just a smidge of fear. So advantages to settling down on the sugar, or, I mean, I could go in theory under the stone, but the stone wouldn't give me anything, it would just get removed. No, the sugar would give me more food and it would give me access to a luxury from the beginning of the game. However, it pushes my city closer to the north of the map. Now, it does look like there's another island up to the north. There's a little bit more sugar to go and get, but if I want to go and settle on that area, actually, I don't want to be closing anywhere close to the coast. This is actually as close as I want to get. Yeah, I quite like this starting position. It means I can work the food tile immediately. There's not a huge amount of 2-2 tiles going on here. It's going to be a very low production capital, but there is a lot of choppable stuff. So I'm thinking we're going to go Magnus. Now Magnus obviously gives you Groundbreaker, which gives you 50% extra chop yields. We can mix that with provision to get settlers out. And more importantly, we can go for surplus logistics. Trade routes ending here provide two food to their starting city. Don't forget my ability. We're going to be throwing a lot of things into a set, you know, central nexus city. I, I quite like this. We're going to commit. We're going to commit. Tokyo will grow quickly with this lovely four food tile. We'll work out the additional production soon. I think if I put a couple of quarries down, that would give me some production. There is a two two tile to the north of me up there. We'll make it work. We'll make it work work let's get this scout up immediately go and explore and the most important things for me are trade routes now i'm gonna avoid going holy sites i think i was thinking about taking a religion but i don't need to get a religion in this game and i'd rather steal someone else's and embrace it as my own we're going to focus instead on the usual campuses and commercial hubs i want to expand and i want to expand quick and to do that i need a lot of technology now i could go for mining in order to improve the stone and also to chop these woods. Animal husbandry would probably put at least a couple of horses on the map. There are some decent tiles that might have horses on them. Whenever you see featureless grassland, you always go, okay, yeah, there's probably some secret horses there. You know, mystery horses. So it's possible we might have some. It's whether or not I want to gamble on there being horses or whether I take the safe option and go for mining. Let's go for the gamble on horses. I'm a gambling man. I'm not really. Actually, that's a total lie. Gambling's no fun. What we are really, really hoping for today is a good smattering of tribal huts. And I want builders, I want scouts, I want additional population. We need everything that we can get from them in order to make this start work. Looks like there's a lot of rainforest. I'm very central on this map. Equatorial, you could say. Now, let's finish this scout. And I think we might want to just start working on that settler almost immediately. Aha, one tribal hut. Let's go and see what it has in store for old Ursa. Actually, there's some good citrus over here with some decent tiles around it. This could be, yeah, could well be a good place to settle. Tribal hut. Ah, wheel as a bonus. That is minor resource. Honestly, that's a bit disappointing, but never mind. Now, the trick to Japan is obviously you want to put your districts next to each other so that you get some good adjacency. And what I'm going to be doing is running as much decent commercial hub adjacency as I can. We can start getting some crazy gold. Absolutely crazy gold, as long as we play our cards right on this. I am thinking that we do probably need to dam the river to the north of us, and I believe that is the only dammable tile on this entire floodplained river. We might as well 
take advantage of that. Is that going to let me aqueduct directly across the river like that? I think it will, which means I can go industrial zone. That should be plus two, plus four, five, six, I believe. Yeah, it's always good to know that I can do maths every now and then. Now, let's say I want to plop a city directly on the citrus. It's on fresh water and it's one, two, three, four, five tiles away. It's not too bad. I kind of wanted to go for six, but I don't mind compressing cities a little bit here. Other future cities want to be right on top of each other, but we want to give my trading hub, which at the moment, in lack of other options, my trading hub is my capital. We want to give whatever our trading, uh, trade, trading, trading nexus, our total just support in order to get eight or nine specialty districts. We want to flood it with space. So that would be a little close, probably, but it wouldn't be too bad. Also, what I want to do is thinking about going for a lovely government plaza with some space around it. Now, what I'm thinking is a commercial hub there and there with these two cities. I could then also pop down aqueduct and we could start building in things like the industrial zone. Already we've got some amazing commercial hubs and I could do another city down here in order to put another commercial hub in that direction. So you can see we can start getting some really good stacks. Other option would be to flip those two around in my capital and put the government plaza there instead, which would let me use more of my capital on it. It's all, it's all a bit early to be doing too many of these tacks. Like I need to do some map tacks, but until we found out where the horses are, I think this is going to be a fundamental problem for my empire. There's, 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 yeah, horses and iron. That'll wreck your game. It'll, it'll make you go, oh, I think I know where I'm going to put everything. And then you sort of go, ha, no, maybe not. There is desert to the south. There is desert to the south. So we might be in a position where we can do a University of Sancor play. Okay, we wanted the trading hub to be on desert. This actually opens up options for us. Now, why am I getting excited about the University of Sancor? It's really, really complicated. If other people trade with your city that has Sancor, they get science and gold, which is fine. You also get plus two science for every trade route to this city. That will stack quickly. But domestic trade routes give an additional plus one faith. What it means is that if I've got Magnus in a University of Sancor city, each trade route to that city will have two bonus food, two bonus science, one bonus faith, and then an extra two gold, one science, and one culture for every district in that city, which is at least one version of that because we would have at least a campus in it. Sancor, it must be built on desert or desert hills, and it must be adjacent to a campus uh, with a university. So nothing too exciting going on here. Venice, oh, Venice is good. Someone is over there, but trade routes to foreign cities earn gold. Ah, you see, I'm used to it giving gold, but then actually when you think about it, it's not so good because it's international trade routes. There is Uruk. Ooh, Gilgamesh. Ah, but luckily I can always... <laughs> It still works. Gilgabro is still the bug. Just declare friendship with them first time. They love it. I think this is going to be our trading nexus. So we're going to commit to this city being a beautiful city. And there's actually some cattle down here. That would mean that we could, in theory, get Zimbabwe. That, unfortunately, is something that is a from this city wonder rather than a to this city wonder. So, okay, maybe that's a little bit ambitious. But at the very least, here is our Sankor play. So that's not the worst thing in the world. And basically now what we do is we start stacking all the specialty districts in this city so that we get the maximum. Again, I don't want to get too attached to anything in particular on that city. It's not it's not going to be the best, but yeah, this is this is okay for now. This is fine for now. I need to get this city settled quickly to stop Gilgamesh from going towards it. Oh, goody. Looks like we are going to be surrounded by America. Ah, Yes, Japan and America, such lovely allies. They're not interested in friendship, not like Gilgabro. Oh no. Oh, Nazca, there is a big desert here and Nazca is probably going to be a really good city-state if we can pick that one up. So yeah, just keep an eye on that. Oh yeah, America has denounced me immediately. They don't like my isolationist ways. God King and then Discipline. As much as Survey is fun, I do have a Barb Camp I am trying to defeat immediately. Oh, I don't think I actually pointed out the horses. There were a couple, but I don't think any of them were really on top of anything I was going to do. There's a horse up in this direction. So that in itself is not a problem. Although what I could do is just flip the industrial zone and the aqueduct like that just to put it in range. I think that would work. Okay, Gilgamesh are very much settling towards me here. That's not particularly 
particularly fun. We want to just keep an eye on that. Ultimately, as long as I get Sankor in the city, it doesn't matter where this city is particularly to be my trading nexus. I just want it to be my trading nexus. Oh, hello, these barbs are getting frisky. Luckily, Battle Cry is the antidote to all of that. Pantanal. Oh, wow. Gilgabro's got Pantanal immediately. That's good for them. This Barb encampment is still very much charging at me, but that's fine. Military tradition boosted, era score, and a bit of gold. Yerevan. This game is really wanting me to go Faith, but Faith is not what I'm going to do today. You know, you, you haven't got to have Faith. It's just, uh, it's just a, you know, something that might be good. Oh, the scout just took my warrior out. Oh, ho, ho. God, these barbs are just uh, aggressive. Isn't this lovely? The first tile Gilgamesh has gone for is the tile closest to where I want to put my city. That could not be better. Oh, Gilgamesh, what are you doing? Okay, so Settler number one is out. What am I going to do? I want to get this campus down as quickly as possible, but I think we need to find out more about the world. So I'm just going to flip out one more scout quickly. Yeah, losing that early game warrior was a little bit problematic for me. There's pottery. Let's get writing down. I need this campus up as quickly as possible. It's not going to be a brilliant campus for me early game, but just anything right now is going to help. Also, considering the fact that I've got a bit of a slow start, craftsmanship, foreign trade, all of these boosts, I need to absolutely religiously look at them to make sure that we're not losing any science or culture here. I do not want to put anything out that I would then lose. Like, we need every boost we can get. Ooh, I killed a barb and I think Yerevan liked that. Awesome. Okay, that's a strange one, but what are you going to do? Right, this is currently my trading nexus. This is where I want all trade routes to go to, okay? So not from, but to. And in order to make it work, I'm going to just weave around and claim a couple of tiles. It's a huge expenditure of early game gold, but I want this to be my Sankor city. It is worth it, I, I think. <laughs> We shall see if it actually turns out to be worth it, but for now, I think it's worth it. I really need irrigation as quickly as possible, and that involves putting a farm down. I do have tiles for farms, but I'm just going to make another scout for now in that city, and we're going to go for the builder in this city. Yeah, my citrus bow is a good one. Can I sell that for much? No, the AI is really doesn't want citrus. It is too tangy for their delicate taste buds. You have to respect that. You have to respect that. Looks like there might be a little bit of coast, actually, that runs around in this area. So the island only goes so far. Don't forget, this is a large continents and islands map. If I don't have the space around me, we can always go and find more. I feel like we're going to have more space on this map than we might think. Oh, with these war carts, I'm always so pleased when you can make friendship with Sumeria. It's always such a ridiculous game when you can't. Egypt! Oh, this is the... See, what's going to happen is we're going to have a bunch of civs appear now that are all about bonuses to trading with them internationally. It's going to be what happens because it always happens like that. As soon as you want to go domestic, it's like, oh, would you like all of these allies? And you're like, I guess so. Egypt are over in that direction. We've got plenty of space. Plenty of space. I'm not too worried. How much do they dislike us? Minus seven. Oh, joy. They want to buy my citrus for more, though, so I will sell that to them. I'm not precious about having happy cities beginning of the game. I want to keep expanding for now. Speaking of expansion, let's immediately start getting these campuses out. It's going to be an 18 turn blighter, but it's worth picking it up. This campus as well is only a plus one for now, but it will get better once I start putting districts down. And then I need to just save some gold up and we're going to go for another builder. What do we get for a pantheon though? Oh, normally Japan you go immediately on God of the Sea, but I have so few actual boats here. It's ridiculous. Do we go city patron God? Goddess. This could be fun. 25% production towards districts and cities without a specialty district. That is both of these. It would help me to accelerate early game very quickly. There are a couple of marsh tiles around, but no real desert floodplain. So I think reeds and marshes would be a little bit wasted on this playthrough. God of Craftsmen would help these horses, but I'm a little bit away from picking those up at the moment. Hey, you know what? Just in the interest of doing something different. I don't remember the last time I went city patron goddess. So 25% extra production towards these two first campuses. Let's do it. Why not? Let's just get it done. That's taken four turns of this one and a couple of turns of that one. Yeah, let's do it. There's foreign trade. We found something across the narrow sea. Lovely. Let's go early empire quickly. I can improve five tiles. I will do that soon. God King. Nah. Let's go urban planning now. That'll be good. 
fact, let's just pick up Survey. My scouts are out. They are technically able to level up right now. If I can level any of them, I will start to explore a little bit quicker. Where is that Samarkand? Okay, cool. One thing I do need to look at quickly, though, is getting this trader in as quickly as possible. So we're going to get Campus finished. Yeah, let's get the campus finished and then we'll get the trader in. But that would be really good because already, once that trader is finished, this city will be generating an extra science, culture and two gold from a trade route. Those are the sort of yields that make us uh, very, very happy indeed. All in, another continent in that direction. Okay, okay, this is all good. Gobastan. Is it just that every single person has a natural wonder apart from old Ursa here? Look at this little peninsula though. Oh, this is just, just screaming canal city. I want to move it just a little bit away from my capital, ideally, but that as a canal city would be, oh, it would be good. It would be magnificent. Actually, I don't know whether or not either of those two spaces would be better because this would close it towards the trading nexus a little bit. Yeah, I want my cities to be close together so that I can get some good district adjacency, but I don't want them to be close to the trading nexus. So actually that tile works well. What's in the tribal village? 20 faith. Oh, after you get a pantheon. It's always after you get the pantheon that that appears, isn't it? State workforce has advanced considerably. Considerably lovely. Well, that's a good thing. We'll get this trader going. That campus is almost finished. This campus is now finished, so a little bit more science. Oh, doesn't matter, because Teddy is already on 26 science per turn and coming towards me rapidly. Oh, dear. Your people are lazy and unworthy. Gilgabro. Oh, shots fired. Blimey. I feel hurt. Recorded history boosted because that's our second campus finish. Just a little bit of early game science. It's not a huge amount. Come on, Gilgamesh. Don't, don't you dare abandon me. Coupe. Hello. Honored to meet you. Exchanging capitals is a great idea. Looks like you're over there. Okay. Coupe on the map is always good for a little bit of chaos. Yeah, we'll send you a delegation. Send you. Oh, come on. Be my friend. Be my friend. Canada? Yeah, Canada, actually. We've got some good people around us. We don't mind Canada because they're not typically very aggressive. Where are they? I swear we pressed the button to go and find their city as well. Oh, they're over here. Sorry, they're just on the edge of a minimap. Ottawa. Oh, they've got a really, really cold start. That'll be good for them. Right. This is the first, the first, the first of many routes. Now, do you see how all of my international routes are terrible. We're going to put this immediately onto internal routes. Oh, and already two food, one production. That is the natural trading route. And we've got one district in the trading nexus, which means we get two gold, one science, one culture. That's just a little bit of everything across the board. That will massively help just boost my empire a little bit. Just a little bit. A little bit is all we need. We've got builders being worked in both cities. We just need to improve some stuff and go from there. There is some iron. Oh, right next to where I was going to put the industrial zone, actually, as well. So that's good. We at least have some iron here. Samurai are an option. I am not ruling war out of this game. I'm just putting it out there now. War is very much something we may end up doing. Oh, a gentle eruption. A tiny massage of lava upon your nation's back. Mmm, warming. Yeah, I'm settling for a normal age, by the way. We've got four turns. There's very little I can do at this early stage of the game. I don't want to be wasting huge amounts of money chasing the inevitable. So I think we'll we'll just rush off this. We're going to go to 10 pop next uh, turn, but 15, the Gilgamesh, 14, 17, 5, 12. We're behind on population. I don't like that. I know it's against Deity AI and the Deity AI gets a really good start, but I feel like we should be expanding a little quicker than we are at the moment. So we'll get that builder out. I'm going to put a few turns into a settler. We want to start settling fairly quickly now if we can help it. That would be amazing for us. So Tokyo is going to do the same thing. Commercial hubs are going to be the second districts for both of these cities. I think Tokyo, I will see if I can just pinch out that government plaza. That'll be a good one for it. But otherwise, yeah, that's pretty fine. So with early empire, we're going to, yeah, as I say, jump on settlers a little bit here. Let's put that in. Survey is a good card. These builders are almost done. I'm just, I was waiting on getting craftsmanship for as long as I can, because that is an instant boost. But I do need that to be finished as quickly as possible. There is an iron mine. Now an iron mine is a really handy one because I can start selling that iron for a bit of gold. And look at this. Three people want to buy my open borders. Yes, yes. Yes, I'll take the gold up front. That's lovely. And I'm immediately going to put Magnus in. Magnus, in you go. Feels really weird not going for Pingala first, but you know, we have to play the unusual meta that we're going for here. Pingala will probably go into Tokyo. 
you know, I'm trying to I'm trying to play some more unusual starts. Go for some more unusual games. It's 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 good fun. We like it. How much is just to buy a Sattler? 440. Hey, that's not difficult to get with some iron coming in here, so that's that's okay. Just keep an eye on this from America. I just see like a random warrior in the middle of nowhere. It is levied. It's from Venice. Are you heading towards me? No. Not at the moment. I don't trust America though at all. As far as I can throw them, not far at all. Normal age. What are we going to do? For inquiry. I think for inquiry is the easiest one to get stuff on. Getting that era score every time you complete a Eureka is one of the easiest ways of getting era score. And I mean, if we get some from libraries as well, that's a bonus. It's not really what we were going for, but it's still useful. Now, irrigation will get boosted in a second. That's lovely. I will just quickly improve this quarry to give me the masonry boost, but then I can go and take some luxuries and start to sell them, which is a lovely thing. Tokyo, yep, a couple of turns into settlers, please. Let's get settling. Let's start spreading out now. There is the farm. That's craftsmanship. Oh, good. That's really, really handy. Okay, now we can immediately switch to state workforce. Let's get that going fast. Still throwing a couple of turns into settlers. We'll do that. I'm going to pull this builder over though quickly to this tile. I want to put the commercial hub down ideally before I get the settler because that settler will knock my uh, population below four and I won't be able to put the commercial hub down for a couple of turns. Oh, Cardiff. Cardiff is always fun for powering up your harbors later into the game. So that's not necessarily a bad idea either. There is sugar. Okay, we're now in the situation where I believe we can buy luxuries for very cheap. So we're going to buy them for effectively two gold per turn and three gold per turn and then sell mine for 14 gold per turn. It's a good deal. It's a very, very good deal. Let's just immediately get this settler out. It's going to push a little bit more um, production onto these two. Yeah, effectively two turns, but it means in eight turns time or nine or ten turns time, I'll be able to go from two cities to five. That's not a bad little expansion, is it? Uh, currency is now unlocked. That is a good thing. Ideally, apprenticeship is where I want to be going next. So I'll just take a couple of turns of archery and we'll go from there. Early game, engineer points and merchant points are going to do well for me. These are oh, these merchants are good. Trade route capacity by one. I want as many early game traders as is physically possible. Etiman Anki's gone. I'm actually quite happy about that. It's always tempting to go through it, but it's never worth it with Japan, only because you want all of these tiles for districts. Like, as soon as you start getting attracted to keeping tiles, it's you end up not building the districts, and you end up uh, always regretting it later on. It's just like, embrace it, build the districts, it's fine. This feels like a strange move, but I'm actually going to go and settle there without any fresh water, because I can aqueduct over. I can also get the campus sorted which is a lovely plus four immediately it gives us a bit of proximity to the trading nexus but not too much proximity but this fertile i can then improve really quickly as well so that's where we're going to go and settle to start with and again another luxury immediately go and sell it thank you egypt oh that's the gold per turn that i was looking for as well and canada selling uh, iron to canada of all of the people to sell it to i'm quite happy about that because i don't think that canada are going to be swordsmen rushing me or man at arms rushing me with anybody on this map Oh, I lost a population and I lost oh, both of those improvements just as I finished them. Oh, that is, mmm, that's fun. <laughs> okay, luckily I just bought another builder, luckily, but oh, that is painful when that happens. It's like, oh, you know that new thing that you love? Yeah, it's dead now. You know, we decided to leave it with you long enough for you to grow an attachment to it. Just so you really loved it. And now we're going to take it away. I need to do this in a sort of careful ordering. There is the tile. So I now have that tile in the trading nexus, but I'm going to stop building the settler so that when I chop the rainforest and get the population, then I can comp yeah, put the commercial hub down. Then I can switch back to the settler and finish it next turn. So I've got the population to actually build the district. I, it, it's a bit convoluted that, but I think that was the way to do it. Oh, I just got a relic. Oh, I've gone from having no tribal huts at all in this playthrough to there is a relic. I mean, I'll take it, but that's so random. So that settler is probably going to go and settle over near that little peninsula. It's not the best place, but it does give me access to a citrus really quickly. I'm thinking actually settling near luxuries is not a bad move here. I do want to claim this sort of bay, this naturally defensive base. I'm going to move this settler over and go and settle towards it. One, two, three, four. It's a little close. 
But with the population boost that I'm looking for, I think we should be able to keep it. And let's finally go and fix all of this flooded stuff. You see, this is going to be one of those cities where a dam is going to be so important here. And Canada wants to give me 50 gold per turn for my relic. You know what? I think I'm going to let them. Just, yeah, that's, that's fine. Cool. Okay, I think I found a way of turbocharging my empire here. <laughs> <laughs> you know when sometimes it's like, I don't know if this feels like a good move or a bad move. Hello America, nice warriors you've got there. I'm just gonna plonk a city right next to you, but don't worry about me. It's fine, I'm gonna be a good neighbor, I promise. Next, governor. Yeah, Magnus is really important, but I'm gonna hold off upgrading just for a sec because I do need a couple of other things, like another governor to keep my city safe is gonna be a good thing. I'm gonna take Pingala for a second just to plop you down there. Pingala might have to get moved over to this city quickly, but we're doing okay. There's masonry, and after that we're gonna go for horseback riding. Build a pasture. Have I not really done that yet? I guess these horses haven't been improved yet, have they? So yeah, I'm switching to urban planning as well. Survey is good, but my scouts have found nothing. So we're going to go with Kogi, just in case I need to build an army. Because that move, yeah, America may not have liked that move. We'll watch what their warriors do. You settle too close. Oh, I'll take 30 diplomatic favor. Okay, that might appease them for a second. I'm going to still keep settling towards them, but that 30 favor means that I can then sell it to probably Canada. As you know, back to America. So they've just effectively given me 270 gold for nothing. Sure. Oh, I can pick up Yerevan because I can. So I get some mirror score from that and some warriors just to, you know, give me a small sense that I have an army on this map. I really don't, but at least I have a single friend now. Yeah, this is a really difficult city in the terms of like, I'm going to struggle to hold on to it whilst um, I don't have any population in that area. But I think we should be OK. There's a camp. So that counts as an extra luxury. Oh god, Canada is bankrolling me this game. This is awesome. And I could sell my citrus as well, but I think I'm going to want to keep my cities happy for a second in order to make sure it doesn't break away. You settled too close. 30 diplomatic favor. Thank you so much. I really don't mind causing grievances by lying to people. It's really not that big a problem diplomatically. I'd rather just take the diplomacy favor and then immediately sell it, probably to America. In fact, actually saying that, do I want to sell it to America? I'll sell it to Canada because I think they're a more reliable trading partner. America there is still that small threat of the fact that they may just attack us randomly. I mean, I'd like to point out it wouldn't be random. I would be very much uh, deserving of it, but uh, yeah, what are you going to do? Let's actually just force work this food tile uh, just to keep this city growing. In fact, actually, I will just force work that tile as well because we can go and improve that now. Okay, there's a major flood, but it's fine. We're going to go and settle now up and towards that marsh. Perfect. Tokyo is looking good. Let's just quickly... Actually, we're going to just play this cleverly. I'm going to buy that tile uh, in the city that's too uh, close to, so it's a little bit cheaper. Then I'm going to chop it whilst it's under the influence of Magnus, because that'll rush that commercial hub. And then I'm going to take the tile back so that I can put a government plaza down on it, assuming that that's the city that wants the government plaza. That is a question. Do I want to put that in, or do I want this city to have the government plaza instead? Oh, ho, ho, ho. now that is a question. Now, I don't know if this actually counts as a domestic um, district. Uh, sorry, a specialist district. I don't think it does, but I... You know what? I'm going to actually hold it. I'm going to I'm going to see if I can do that. That's that's fine. So what we're going to do instead, now that we've got that, is actually use this city. Oh, this is going to be so confusing, but I'm going to actually get this tile and build the trader first. So hang on, let's just quickly switch that tile in and then we'll build the commercial hub for three gold per turn. That's fine. And then I'll take this and then I'll take that tile back. The borders are going to be absolutely disgusting, but <laughs> what are you going to do? It is incredibly convoluted, but I like the way that's looking now. So this city is now growing for the first time, which is good. We're going to pick up a granary first and then with the gold, I'll see if I can get a market and we'll start sending more traders to this city. Don't forget, this trade route is now worth an extra two gold, two, uh, one science and one culture. These domestic trade routes are going to be the things that keep me going this game. Actually, I'm just seeing something here. We might be able to get myself 
off a bunch of gold up front. Like a lot of gold up front, depending on how much this citrus goes for. Quite a bit. That's 459. I'm going to buy in this great scientist. Libraries provide plus one science. I wouldn't be getting her normally. That's a free library. And then all libraries will give me more science. Oh, setting up for the end of the game is... That was a good thing to do. I'm actually pretty impressed that I spotted that one. Awesome. I'm gonna just put it into Tokyo. Extra library. Hey, I mean, that is good for me. I like that. How's my population doing now? 11, 18, 19, 24, 8, 16. Terrible. Oh, we need to grow. We need to grow a lot and we need to grow quickly. Actually, I'm gaining two population between turns. I'm gonna go from 11 to 13 population, but I swear I've stayed around 10 population for a long period of this game. One more city though. That is a nice Palenta, peninsula city. Palenta city, I almost said. <laughs> it's nice. Whatever it is, it's nice. There is political philosophy. We can get a government and in short, it's going to be Classical Republic. This is the one. I'm building loads of districts. I want the great people points. I want, for instance, the scientist points aren't very useful to me right now, but that would be the sort of thing that would absolutely be useful. We'll go urban planning, builders, we'll go diplomatic league, and I'm just going full economy right now, so we might as well go for settlers as well. We're going to just kind of balance out chopping out settlers, you know, improving my land, making sure we're getting out and doing fun things. kind of want feudalism, but I also want recorded history as quickly as possible. And it's just a shame that it's America that's so close to me here because they are always technologically so good. Yeah, really, really, really good. And Samurai Rush is not going to be very effective against them. What are they? 50 strength? 48 strength. So yeah, they're, they're tough, but they're not that tough. Let's get some dyes in. That's another thing. What are the market selling these things for at the moment? Quite a bit. I could just keep getting my gold in. Stop me from being super happy, but I'm not exactly sad right now. So yeah, I'm going to do it. 100 gold coming in per turn. That is the sort of gold that I like to see. Let's just chop this. Six population city now. Trading Nexus is doing good. But I want this government plaza finished soon. I'll build a water mill for now. And I'll purchase the market. So that I can get another trade route going to the trading Nexus. I think it's going to be probably... I mean, both of these cities have no housing at all. Which isn't great. I'll do it from this city. This is probably the one that's easier to build on right now. Perfect. 230 gold. That's not too bad. We'll start to get these traders in soon this is good oh yeah america and gilgamesh are really going for it at the moment and i do not want to get involved in that <laughs> that feels messy it feels pointless it feels like a waste of early game trading i mean could you stop building mashi pishi while you're being attacked at the very least i would feel like something to do trading nexus there we go two food two production four gold two science two culture i mean it's not a bad little deal is it Pretty decent. I think getting apprenticeship boosted and getting that card in the game really quickly has got to be a good thing. Oh, and it's annoying that I'm going to miss out on this great merchant, I must say. That's a free trader and I love extra trade routes. I mean, these trading nexus routes are already getting pretty good. But we're going to improve this even more. One turn. Ah, oh, one turn away. That's frustrating. Okay, let's just put a turn of building in and then I can get that government plaza sorted. Now, apprenticeship. This really needs boosting. Where can I stick a mine down? We've already got one mine on the iron. I think that is my only mine though, which is amazing. And there's not a lot of exposed hills around for me to improve after that point. So you know what? I'm going to go and do this tile just to go and put a mine down on that one. That'll help this industrial zone for in a second. I mean, that's not going to stick around, but yeah that'll be one that'll get that builder sorted and it can do another one over there it's gonna be a bit messy but i think we can boost this pretty soon that's drama and poetry recorded history time let's make use of the fact that we've got campuses appearing in pretty much every city i own at the moment oh that's not a lot of extra gold needed i could maybe steal that much and if i'm lucky on this one let's see if they pick it up next turn then I'm going to miss out, but I might be able to gold purchase otherwise. It just depends on what happens. Sometimes when it gets really close, the game will buy the merchant. But no, doesn't look like they're doing it right now. Oh, oh, another flood. Oh, I lost those flipping tiles again. And I lost a population in Tokyo. That is annoying. But there is the merchant. Perfect. Okay, we're not going to get Coleus, but that is fine. 
So Magnus, chop. Okay, apprenticeship, I'm gonna stop doing that for now. Let's get the lumber mill going, because that's really good. But we've chopped that out, which is awesome. I'm then actually going to get the government plaza, and then we're gonna immediately chop that out as well. Look at that, mathematics is done. The city's housing is looking good. What do I want to do? Warlord's Throne? Hmm. Ancestral Hall. Extra production towards settlers in this city. I do want that, actually. That's a really good one, so we'll chop that out now. But I think these traders are even better now. Three food, three production, and it did count. It did count. So I'm getting three science, three culture, and six gold now. Oh, these, these are getting good. And if I put surplus logistics in now... Then these are now worth five food, these trade routes. Yeah, this is getting good. In fact, actually, cities going forward, instead of opening with campus, I'm going to open even with merchants or admirals. Yeah, uh, commercial hubs or harbors. I think that's going to be the better route for me. Just building up the industry, making this good. Oh, that's annoying. Please stop breaking from flood. You know I'm trying. Could great bath it. Should we see if we can great bath it instead of putting the dam down? It wouldn't be very good for that industrial zone, but it would be entertaining. Uh, nah, no, I'll save it, I'll save it, we'll, sa we'll do something useful with the city, don't worry. So it's trading nexus is the city that I want to boost, so there we go. All foreign trade routes to that city now get plus two gold, I think it was? Yeah, actually I get two gold as well, and increases my trade route capacity by one. So, I can now put a trader into Gifu. That's another campus finish down here as well. Ah, oh, you gotta love it. You have to love it. Magnus now also has provision. Okay, cool. So any settlers coming out of that city will no longer cost population, which is a really good thing as well. And the trading nexus, look at this. Five food, three production, six gold, three science, three culture. And that's the medieval fares boost on turn 80. We are trading and we're trading quick. Good. I like this game so far, so far. The speed of the start has been just what we wanted to see. That feeling when a hurricane appears on your borders and you realize you're playing as the wrong version of Japan now. <laughs> I'm in danger. There is apprenticeship though. We have boosted it, we have completed it, and we want to get these industrial zones down as soon as we can because nobody is on the engineers at the moment and those are things that I want to basically steal. I guess it's the easiest way of putting it. I don't want anybody getting my merchants if I can help it. Recorded history. Urban planning is always really helpful, but natural philosophy is always more helpful than that. Builders, settlers, we like all of that stuff, that's all good. Up to 55 science now, but it's going to get higher. Astrology into celestial navigation, then I want to unlock aqueducts, and then it's a case of beelining the University of Sancor. I want that, and I want it quickly. To do that, normally I would go connoisseur first, but I'm going to go researcher first today, because, actually saying that, Pingala's not in a very helpful city there. I'm going to move Pingala to Tokyo. I should have done that a few turns ago, really, but never mind. That'll be worth at least another 10 science per turn, so very handy. With Celestial Navigation done, we are in a position where we can start putting harbours down, and that is going to be very handy as well. We've got this granary almost sorted. Let's get this one sorted. I just want the base population in these two cities, actually all five of my cities, so that we can continue to expand. But with some farms there, there, we're going to get this farm next turn, Feudalism, which we're coming up to. I want to be able to get six farms on that. There is another one, Defensive Tactics. This is always what I call the Poisoned Chalice. If you have to basically research the entirety of this civic, it means that you're being inefficient and you're having a fantastic game. Because if you do have the boost, someone's declared war on you. So, you know, that sucks. It's the one you don't mind having as a thing. I'm actually thinking, oh, there's, there's so many different governments for me here, but there are, there are some things that I'm considering. Merchant Republic lets me build districts, and that is really, really cool, because I can actually flip that with my Pantheon to have a 35% boost at the beginning. No, actually, that would be, how much is it? 25? No, it'd be 40% boost. So that's really, really good. Monarchy, however, gives me housing on walls, and I do not have a lot of fresh water around my start, so that would be quite handy. We always use monarchy though, and I'm tempted to give Mercant Republic a go. So well let's go and do that. Let's 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 do something different today. Why not? Let's let's play unusually. Also, feudalism is now boosted. Huzzah! 
And finally, a very special shout out goes to Glorious Petra, I am Salty Tech, Matthew Wilkinson, Paul Coffey, Doughboy91, Seancrates, Portland, Scott Stratton, Major King Kong, Davalex, Skeptical Bear, Kroger Brand Trail Mix, Alex Noob, Cinnamon Beard, Petra Ryan, Matthew Hatch, Amiri C, Henry, Rom88, Radiatore, Private Selection, Genoa Salami, Boy Zorro, Callum Billy, Garrett Gowan, Polar Bear Ray, El Truand, Creston, thank you for all of your support, cheers!